Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So long awaited I know and um, promised is this colour along in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland illustrated by that fabulous Charles Santor. Um, I've been working my way through this book and it's a book that I hope to complete. I've got a long way to go so I'm nowhere near there yet but I thought we'd do this together. Now usually I mix up my materials in this book from pastels to polys to whatever colours a bit of rubbing out dust there, sorry <laughs> um, pastels, polys, whatever I need to make the colours up so we're going to start obviously with skin it's always the first thing I start on and I've got my beloved polychromos here and um, I've got what have we got? beige red I don't know if you're picking that up, are you? Block everything else out. There we go. Beige red. So, I can see a hair somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah. So, beige red, otherwise known as pale flash. Um, and I always start with Alice's um, skin. And then I do her hair. Because they... I, I've been following the same throughout the book. So the colours I use will be the same colours throughout the book. Give me one second, just going to open the window, I've got all hot. Yeah, so we'll start that and then we can have a chat while I'm filling in her skin. <clears throat> so let me bring you in a little bit. There we go. If I tip the camera up slightly, there, we've got a perfect view of Alice's beautiful face. So this is the last page in the book. And I chose this one because most of the, just the plain, straightforward Alice pictures I've done um, and it would be good for you to be able to see what colours I'm using throughout the book, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to lay, just lightly, a light coat of beige red down and we'll start filling her in. <coughs> and this is how I've done her the whole time. So the saga on the leg while I'm, because while I'm, this could take some time. Um, yeah, the saga on the leg. So I went back up to the hospital on Thursday, was my appointment, um, and they were very pleased with its progress, and I think, well, at that point, I'd escaped surgery, which is great news. And what they did was, um, I'm putting it on her lips too, just making sure you can see. What they did was fitted... Um, like a drainage thing over it so that it could uh, freely uh, I don't know what's the word freely come away but um, would allow me to get dressed and things because I haven't been able to because it just makes such a mess of everything every time you put a dressing on it goes through it so um, yeah so they did that they fitted this um, like bag thing over it um, and, that, and that was doing well and working really well I was actually able to sit here in with pyjama bottoms on <laughs> and then this morning I noticed that it had started to swell again and what's happening is obviously my body is still creating this um, fight of infection and still creating this um, I don't want to be too graphic this stuff in my leg that needs to come out I'm no medical expert but that seems to be what's happening and the puncture wound on my leg is trying to close over on the outside so which is preventing whatever this build up of this prevent not whatever this preventing the build-up of whatever's in my leg from coming out so um, yeah so I don't know what the next stage is I'll have to keep an eye on it and see um, let's check it out, yeah. um, and see how it goes and um, I do have the hospital's number I can ring them if I have any concerns so I'll just keep an eye on on it and um, and see what happens. It's not too bad at the moment, but um, I've only got three days of antibiotics left, or two days after today of antibiotics left, so... 
could be fun. Anyway, so that's that. I'm sick of, you know, I'm sick of... This has gone on for weeks now and I'm bored with it. <laughs> um, yeah, I want it. I just want it sorted out. I just wish they'd get it over and done with. If they're going to open it up, do it, you know. Don't keep messing about and saying, oh, well, we'll leave it. It looks better and... Because... Yeah, well... There we are. So it's just a very light coat over Alice. I'm not even sure that the camera will be able to pick that up. So I'm just going to keep going and give, and so we get a nice base coat down. It's easier to work with to put other colours on the top of when you've got already got pencil there because it gives it like that surface, that oily surface that we need. So I'm just going to do her keep going with her face okay might as well do the is she in shot she is um, I might as well do her neck while we're here have I so the paper in this these books are printed by Apple Source Press I love that name and the paper in this book feels really smooth and you you know when you get it you'll think oh nothing's going to work on that but the polychromos love it um the crayon love it the um i don't think i've tried prisms in it i'm not sure i don't think so the pablos love it karen dash pablos that they work really well on it too so But I'm sure the Prismas would, if that's all you've got. I'm sure Prismas work well on it. And as I'm sure um, Black Widows would too. It's just a really nice paper. Okay. Just want to make sure I've got enough coverage on her face. Faffing as usual. Okay, so then we've got a little bit of a very pale base. So then I'm going in with cinnamon. Let me see if I can get it to focus for you. There you go, cinnamon. And then what I'll do is get darker and darker. Um, and what I'd like try to do is to fill in the grayscale. So basically, all I do is follow the wonderful Charles Santor's work. There, you know, there's nothing left to the imagination other than to the getting the colours correct for her skin you don't have to worry about anything even the colours I've chosen from for her uh, bow and her dress from Charles's original um, illustrations of this book um, I've been and um, I've, I've got a little bit of a haul I'm waiting for a couple of other bits to come um, and I've got a bit of a haul to show you all, books and whatnot. So, um, and included in that is a couple of new Mr. Santor books. I can't help myself. <laughs> and when you're at home ill, um, and you know, I, I couldn't get out of bed or I couldn't, you know, sit to do anything properly. Um, yeah, Amazon becomes your best friend. So I've got quite a few bits coming. So I'm just following all the dark bits of where Charles has given us the shadows. I'm putting down a light coat of this cinnamon. And it takes a while with, with um, polychromos. It's not going to cover Alice's skin in one go. Otherwise, it will become streaky and horrible. So yeah, I've brought um, a few of his other wondrous works, and quite a few Christmas books too, because I don't have enough colouring books to colour in, <laughs> and I don't have a problem at all, folks. I don't know what you're talking about. There is no addiction here. My name is Lucy, and I do not have an addiction to buying colouring books and supplies. <laughs> anyway, um, they're all wonderful books and I've got um, 
I already had Charles Santos' The Night Before Christmas, I think it is, the book I'd got, and that's beautiful. So I shall be colouring in that. And um, the ad thanks for all the advice on the last video um, about what book to take to hospital. And I don't, I can't remember the person. Well, I do remember the person that that said the the advice that I took, but I won't say out loud in case they don't want me to. And they quite sensibly said to me, um, Lucy, I wouldn't take any books that you love. Um, because, quite simply, if you're going to have anaesthetic, um, you wouldn't colour in your favourite colouring book using your favourite supplies after a skin full of alcohol. And um, so expecting to be able to colour in a beautiful book when you've had anaesthetic is no different. So that really struck home with me and I thought, oh my goodness, yeah, yeah that's, that's absolutely correct. You wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't come home drunk and expect to colour in a, a, one of your books, would you? Not that... Oh, it's been a long time since I've been drunk. Um, <laughs> but, um, that, so I didn't take any any books with me at all. I took a reading book. And I grabbed one out of the cupboard and I took Twilight. So I was reading the Twilight books, which um, I've seen the films, but I've never read the book. It's been in my cupboard forever and I thought, well, that be relaxing because I already know the story so you don't have to worry about trying to work out what's going on or so it was quite good so yeah so thank you all for all your wonderful advice okay so that's cinnamon so we are getting there we are building colour slowly okay So we're just going to get darker and darker as I go along. Right, the next one is medium flesh. Um, and I'm going to say the number, which is nine, hang on, nine, if I can see it, 9201. Now, I understand, I was watching Sammy the other day, Colour and Chat with Sammy, and I understand that they, they are changing the names. So, like, pale flesh has become rosy beige. Is it? No, beige, beige red? Yeah. Um... And this one is going to be changing too, so um, that's why I've given you the number as well. So it will no longer be medium flesh, which is good because if we think of it, of flesh colour, is it always is it always you know do we always think of flesh or should we always think of flesh um, as being white? No, we shouldn't. So you know. Why should all these be pen all these pencils be named flesh when they're all for Caucasian skin? You know, it doesn't make sense. So it's nice to see that we're moving away from that. And they're not um, they're not just colours for skin anyway, are they? We use these beautiful tones for lots of other things like flowers and I'm rambling. <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> so this is all I'm doing. So I just keep going. Then eventually I'll go back with the um, beige red and we'll blend it all in. But I use quite. I'm, I'm beginning to use quite a lot of colours to build up that tone. And you can have the confidence in, in um, Charles's books to do that because all the shading's done for you. All the hard work's done. Isn't it wonderful? It's no wonder I love him so much. Yeah. He's a bit of a hero, isn't he? My goodness, the, I, I, I've said before in my videos, but what I wouldn't give to be able to draw like this. Like Christine Karen and Charles Santor and Ruth Sanders is a new one that I found. Uh, Sanderson? I think it is Ruth Sanderson. Is a new one I found and you'll see in my haul I've ordered a couple of her books too. Right, now I'm going in with, this is very dark so you have to be very careful when you put this on. I'm going in with Kaput Mortem. Beautiful, beautiful colour but it is quite dark so. But it does bring out are really nice when you blend it in 
it does bring out a really nice skin tone. Caucasian skin tone. Yeah. So you can see it you can see I start to to build up now. And I've been forgetting her neck, haven't I? I'll have to go back. Never mind. And the other thing I noticed as well, which might help some of you, I'm not sure, is that I always thought when you're colouring skin, because I always start with the skin first, I like to see, I don't know, it's a bit weird, I like to see the personality of the person I'm colouring come to life. And then it seems like the rest of the image is easier from there, if that makes sense. Um, so one of the things that I noticed was that I always thought, oh my goodness, the skin's too orangey, too red. Um, and would tone it down or not put so much colour on. And then when you do the rest of the image, like the hair and things, um, my skin would always look really pasty. I'm going to go over the lips with Kaput Mortem too. Just the dark areas. Yeah, and it would look really pasty, so don't be afraid when you use these colours and you think, oh gosh, Lucy, this, you know, it's too bright, it's too... It's way too bright because when you put the other colours in on the page, it really doesn't, that, that will go. All right, let's put some down here. And this is a great colour for um, shadow on the skin. Particularly at the really dark areas. A leaf in the way. There we go. All right, that's Kaput Morton. Now, um, I like to put Venetian Red. We're, we're mixing them all up, but it does work. Venetian Red, and then blend that in because that's not so dark. It's not as dark as the Kaput Morton, but has a really nice colour about it. So I'm just putting these on lightly, I'm not pressing hard because we don't actually want her skin to be red but putting all these layers on does build up different a different colour you know if you put this down on its own it would be completely different to what we end up with when it's over the top of these other colours or underneath when I do the um, blend, I'm going to do the blend with Cinnamon and um, Rosy Beige. And it does look completely different. So that's why I'm using lots of layers, if anybody was wondering. Because it builds up this, this beautiful colour. Come back over that. Yeah, so this image is where she's just woken up and obviously that will be her, was it her sister, I think? Let's sit with, sitting with her by the riverbank that we saw, that you see right at the beginning of the book. Okay, right. So I'm going to take my, going back to cinnamon, and I'm going to go back over all that, and this is where it should, if I've got it right, the magic should happen. And all these colours will blend and shift. Like there, for instance, round her ear, I had a bit of a dark line there, but it will go. We are going to put some pink in to give her a bit of blush so she's not pasty. And here. Being a bit more cautious around here, around her face, because you can see where Charles has left um, 
the image where the light is on her skin. So, just going to make sure that has a good blend out. There we are. So I think this is all the colours that I use. I do use a bit of ivory, we'll use that one. I'm going to the palest colour now, rosy beige. Um, I do use a bit of ivory back in the over the palest of the parts of the skin. Um, but this is all the colours that I use, so I, I'm not sure that we need to do the hands and that all the hands, <coughs> Alice's hands and her sister's hands together because you've seen the colours and you've seen which order that I use them in. So the hands will be absolutely no different. I will just follow the grayscale that I've been given by Charles. Sounds like I know him personally, doesn't it? <laughs> I wish. Um, yeah, so they won't be any different. Can you see that colour moving? The blends that we're getting together. There we go. So I think we'll be able to I'll be able to finish the skin off camera and then we'll do the background and the leaves together. Oh and her beautiful dress, let's not forget that, that's important. <coughs> Just check, I've moved it, but you can still see what I'm doing. And just keep going. Use those colours. And trust yourself in, just to follow what he's done. And it will work out. And then you can go back in, like if there's any bits of grayscale that are still visible that you're not happy about, you can go back in. There. Okay. Right, let's take a bit of ivory. ivory. There we go. And I'm just going to go over those lightest parts. Right, sip of coffee time. So when I have been able to colour, I've done a few things, not too many, not like I would normally because obviously I haven't been able to sit to do it for too long. Um, I've been colouring world within worlds. Oh my goodness. I shelved that book, obviously because I've got many and I did my challenge um, to colour in every book that I hadn't got a colouring, that hadn't got a colouring in it to have to do one in. Oh, just some. I've made it, I've done a challenge where I would colour in every book that didn't have anything in it. There, that's better. <laughs> um, and so because I'd done Kirby's, World Within Worlds, I, he, he didn't get a look in. Poor Kirby. <clears throat> so I started a page in there, because that's a perfect book really to sort of start and walk away from should you need to. And um, oh, I'm loving it. I, 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 it just, I remember now why I enjoyed it so much. Right, last colour. I'm just going to add a little bit sanguine beautiful colour and um, this should just there we go more of a there we go that's blending in love beautifully and that's it so how many colours have we used one two three four five six seven which is not bad <coughs> It's not bad, it's not taken that long. I'm not sure how long the video's gone on for. But I'm enjoying myself, I hope you are. Oh and please if you um if you do follow along and you do an image, please let me see it, either on Facebook or Instagram. Um here 
was I I know um the wonderful Emma Emma Colours 2020 um, has brought some pastels and did a pastel colour along which looked great and I've asked her to finish it off on camera so I hope she does do that hope you're watching Emma and that you get your child Santor image done so I can see um, and oh the lovely um, Patton Wilson bless her she um, showed in her finished pages that she'd um, done my colour along for the Hannah Lynn um, Tinkerbell and it looked amazing so I was taken back by that the fact that you know I don't know you do these videos and I think oh I don't think anybody's watching them but clearly people are and, and they're getting stuff out of them so that's really nice <coughs> right <coughs> now the pink that I use is quite a bright pink so don't be shocked because it doesn't come out it looks horrendously bright pink madder lake now I need to give her a pinker appearance she's looking a bit bronzy so I'm going to come in lightly and I'm going to give her the blush that she needs on those beautiful young cheeks so that she doesn't look like she's old and haggard she's only a little girl So yeah, I was very touched by everyone's um, comments and concern and, you know, Emma Colours, bless her, sent me a message on Instagram asking how I was, which was really, really nice. Um, and I've had a couple of, another lovely subscriber that said, if I hadn't have posted the video, I haven't blended a bit in there, look. If I hadn't posted a video when I did, the last update video, then she was going to come and hunt me down on Instagram and send me messages to find out how I was. So it was really lovely to know that people are thinking of you, you know. It's, it's very touching. Put a bit over there. A bit around there. We're getting there. And you just keep playing, that's it, until you feel that um, that you've got it right, you're happy with how her skin tone looks. Just keep playing. I'm not happy with that bit there. So I'm going to go back in with my ivory and we're going to blend it all. Oh, it's the edge of my plastic underneath. There we go. And I'm just using the ivory to blend everything together. Now, I may well faff about a little bit more off camera with her, I'm not sure. I think I need to have a break from the face because otherwise you play and play and I ruin things. Um, yeah, I do. It's a really bad habit I've got. What I'll do is go off, do a hand, do the hands, Alice's hands and her sister's hand. Then what we'll do is come back together and we'll do her eyes and her bow combination, which, and the, the lines around her dress. <clears throat> which I always use the same colours, so that would be really good. So I will try not to faff with her face, I will leave her alone, then we'll meet back up and we'll do, like I say, the eyes and the bow and the trim on her dress. Alright lovely people, I'll see you in a second. Okay guys, so I've um, finished the skin and the hands and I've used a tiny little bit of white jelly roll just to bring out the fingernails. I hope you think she looks okay. 
um, and I didn't mess with them. I haven't put any more on. The only thing, the only colour that I did introduce, I should let you know, and that is, um, where are you? There you go. Come on, you can do it. Salmon. And that was literally for her fingernails, just to give it that pink. So let's put some salmon on her lips because. Oh, I'm out of breath. I've run downstairs and. Um, well, I didn't run downstairs. I don't do running. <laughs> I, uh, I went downstairs and made a cup of coffee. And uh, so this is Pink Madder Lake. Um, I want her to have colour on her lips, but she is um, a young girl. I don't know how, how old Alice was. Oh, I do apologise. Let me bring you in. I don't know how old Alice was meant to be in the original book. Um, whether she's early teens. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look it up and find out. Okay, so I'm just going between Pink Madder Lake and Salmon. Oh, I'm sorry. Notifications are going mad. Do you know what it's like? You, you, I commented on somebody's picture today um, on Facebook from um, Anna Hannah's Art. Oh my God, this picture was so beautiful. Excuse me. I'm on my old chair in case I mess up my new one. <laughs> And it keeps dropping. Yeah, and so everybody now that comments on that picture, I get a notification through. It's very annoying. Okay, so I'm not going to do any more with her lips. I'm quite happy. I just want it a sort of natural lip colour. So I promised you that we would focus on the eyes. Now, I was originally using Crayart pencils to do this, but the polychromos work well. But it's absolutely up to you. You know, if you have... A light, a medium and a dark blue, this will work well. So I've got Polychromo Sky Blue, Light Ultramarine and Ultra, um, Ultra Marine. I don't know why I have such an issue saying that, but I do. <laughs> so we're going to take the darkest of our colours, make sure you're nice and central, and you'll see where Charles has done the dark bit round the edge of the eye. I'm just going to bring that round. Okay, then we're going to take the medium blue and we're going to blend that in. I'm going to leave that bit because that's a bit of white in her eye. And then I'm taking sky blue and I'm going to go over the whole lot. There. Okay, now I will take a jelly roll and. Oh, this is a damn chair. I don't sit on my new one because. Um, because of my leg, I don't want. I brought a pale, pale grey and white chair in my wisdom because I'm so clever like that. See, um, <laughs> now don't sit on it. So I'm sitting on the old chair that that keeps falling down. So I look like a child at the end of trying to do any colouring because it sinks. So I'm just going in with some white and just blending that in. Okay, yeah, she looks odd at the moment because we haven't put the black in, but we will. Let's do the other one. So taking the darkest of the blue, following Charles's lines, the medium blue, and the palest blue. And it's as simple as that. There we go. And then I'm going to put some white in. There. Now I could introduce a little bit, uh, the Pablos, I've been using the Pablos and if I wanted a bit of like contrast in there I could put a bit of yellow in there but I'm not sure it would work with like it does with Pablos, they just, oh, they just blend effortlessly, it's like painting, they're just so lovely but we could try, um, let's try, I don't want, um, let's try We'll risk it. Let's try a little bit of where are you? Naples yellow. Refocus, there we go. And I'm just gonna try putting some flex in. That does quite that does work, but it's not as good as the Pablo's. 
just to yeah it works but it's not you know it's not necessary oh oh bloody chair oh my goodness right I'm taking my black jelly roll and it is just a jelly roll 0.6 nothing special not glossy or anything like that and I'm just going to very carefully bring out Alice's pupil just round that white There we are, and then using the white jelly roll, and I'm just putting it on my where are you? I just put it on my hand to make sure that it's running properly. And then I'm just going to put that tiny little bit of white in there. That's it. Okay, we're going to take a very very pale grey. So this is. Cold grey, I'm trying to get it so the light's not on it, there you go, cold grey one. So it's very light, I'm just going to give it a quick sharpen. And we are literally just going to put the tiniest bit of grey in there. It just helps to make the eye... ...appear a little bit more rounded. Okay? That's that. Easy. Right. Now, I'm going to take... We might as well use them all. Um, no, we're going to take Kaput Mortem that we've already used. Oh, look, it actually works better like that. Mm. Right, Kaput Mortem, I'm just going in the little tear duct of her eye. And I might, I don't know why they don't look as blue as they usually do, I might just grab a darker blue. Um, let me see what I've got. Let's try this one. Okay, let's try, without holding up to the camera, look at that. The one I can't pronounce, Indian Thrain Blue, I think that's how you say it. And I'm going to put that, she just, they look more grey today. They normally look bluer. Yeah, well, that's better. I'm bringing a bit of blue out. I'm not sh quite sure why they look so grey. And then we'll go, so into the throne blue, then we'll go back in with Ultramarine. Gosh, this camera's awesome. Look, I didn't need to hold it up. All this struggle, this time. Going back over that dark. There we go. And then take the medium blue, which was, is it going to do it? light ultramarine and we'll go around that pupil we've just put in very carefully there we go mm, I don't know why they don't look so blue today it's a bit odd okay well they're the colours without the dark they're the colours that I also use for the bow so shall we focus on that let me move some mess out the way I've got a pile of polychromos Let's move her over. Right. I'm going to zoom out slightly. That's in. Okay. Let's focus on this. So I'm going to take the lightest of all our blues. Will it pick it up like this? Can you see that? Sky blue. I don't know if that's picking that up. And I'm just going to coat the whole thing. Very gently. Now when I started colouring this book I did use crayons and they work beautifully on this book. Um, and it's nice to mix things up. But since colouring that very first page I didn't even think all that time ago about having the book look consistent on each page. You know Alice looking the same. So I didn't write the colours down. And I probably could recreate it but um, these... Apart from her eyes today, I don't know why her eyes look so dark. Maybe the grayscale's darker on this picture than the others. Does she look? There's blue there. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, I tell you what. Oh, there's that. No, they do look quite dark. 
they do come out quite dark so not to worry okay so yeah so I didn't even think about writing the colours down I have done since so that's how I know um, skin and hair but I'm not convinced that I've written down the colour for her dress now I'm pretty certain that it was either cray arts that I used for her dress or um, black widows because they have such a variety of lovely yellows black widows and so do the cray arts but we'll have a look together um, polychromos have cream but the other yellows are really quite bright so I'm not sure what I used okay so I'm just coating including a little Alice band just coating those in the lightest blue our sky blue like we did with the skin just getting it all over You see what I mean about how the poly polychromos work so well in here? You just literally touch the paper and you've got colour. They're really good in this book. I don't know, this is magic paper, I think. It's like Kirby's books. It feels kind of smooth and you think, oh God, nothing's going to work. But everything works. It's great. Right. And up here, there's a little bit of Alice Band here. There we go. Alright, then we're going to do what we did with the skin. So we're going to take our light ultramarine. Look at that, no effort, just focusing and behaving for me. And we're going to follow the dark lines and bring it down. making sure you like lessen off as you come towards the bottom so that it blends into the pale blue. We can always go back over should we need to. I've got a really bad habit of holding my pencil like that so my thumbs over the top and it gets in the way of you being able to see what I'm doing so I apologize for that. So I'm literally just following Again, Charles's work and it's effortless because he's such a master at <coughs> excuse me such a master at the work that he does like you know the other artists like Kirby and Christine Caron I'm just going to put a few flicks in and I keep saying this on my channel I know I do but it is really true the better the artist because I can't draw to save my life, but the better the artist, the better your colouring comes out because you just literally have to follow what they've given you. Back to my medium one. And I'm just going to put a few blends in there. There we are. And Alice's beautiful bow is coming to life. Isn't that cool? So when everybody says to you, you know, when you show your finishes, pa finished pages at the end of the month, wow, Lucy, that's amazing. Now you know the secret. There isn't one. <laughs> it's just follow Mr. Santor's work. Hmm. Maybe I should have kept it secret. So all of you think that us YouTube creators are colouring gods. <laughs> oh dear. No, it's, I love sharing with you. You know, I can't wait for the rest of my parcels to arrive this week to show you um, the few bits that I've, well, the, yeah, the few bits that I've brought. It's so exciting. So we just blend that through. 
I just it's just quick you know it's not you can keep layering and I probably will to try and get a smoother blend um, you know you might want to go over it two or three times using the same process but you don't have to you know if you're somebody that's impatient and can't be bothered with layering you don't it's not necessary you get the same effect right, this is the darkest blue I'm just going back in because I like where possible to cover up the grayscale as much as I can so deepen that up a bit there you go medium blue Cute, huh? There was a sorry, there was a bug on the camera. <laughs> the trouble with our, with our house is the heating is um, old. The radiators really could do with being replaced and having um, bigger ones downstairs. And um, so my husband's sitting downstairs, bless him, and he's freezing cold. And up here it's boiling upstairs it's unbearable so he's got the heating on downstairs because he's cold and it is cold downstairs um, and I'm boiled to death up here and we have no um, thermostats on our radiators so yeah oh the trials and tribulations hey of modern day life really is a first world problem isn't it I'm hot upstairs and cold downstairs <laughs> you know here we go beginning to come now up get that depth in there because that's the inside part of the bow on the edging and go back in with the medium and then blend it all over with the palest go back in here I'm not happy that this is dark enough back in with the medium On, the, on the, my little LED screen up here and her eyes look brown. I don't know why they're looking so dark. It's annoying me. Never mind, nothing I can do about it. They are blue. Obviously you've seen me colour them and you know they're blue. But, yeah, it's just bugging me a little bit. Never mind. So, yeah, so all my secrets now are being revealed. Everything I've learnt to make me look like a good colouring artist, I'm now showing you. <laughs> there are no secrets. <laughs> Just pick good artists. <laughs> Just 
and supplies obviously I think um, colouring supplies make a huge difference Last little bit round here. There we go. Medium. And the pale. Right, let's come back out and have a look. What do you think, guys? Isn't she cute? She's adorable, isn't she? So I'm keeping keep those pencils to one side because her little apron has blue trim on it, and that's what I use for those. So um, we could actually just do it, I think. Right on the back here is Alice's dress. Can you see this image? Probably not. Let me lift her up. So on the back of the book, there's her bow, and on her dress, she's got blue trim. Can you see? So we should we could put that in while we've got the pencils out actually. Let's just do it. It makes more sense, doesn't it? So again, taking my light, I'm going to fill that in. That's not my light blue. Darn it. Probably wouldn't have made too much difference, but this is the light blue. Let's come back in. I'm still a bit scatterbrained. I know I'm always a bit scatterbrained, but I'm still a bit more scatterbrained than usual. And I'm presuming that's still fighting this awful infection. So I apologise. Right, where else has she got? She's got the trim there. Can't see any there. She's got this side here. Oh, just press them it on my keyboard. Yeah, she's got this bit here. Let's give that a bit of a sharpen. Yeah. This bit here. And around here. And it is that bit there. Yeah. this bit here. I like to do it as um, Charles had originally intended it so that's why I'm as far as I can I'm following his images at the back of the book. So I'm just going in with the medium blue and do we do the dark? No, let's do the dark. Really emphasise those edges. This bit's quite dark anyway. There we go. Take the pale blue. Just make sure it's all blended in. Okay. And we've got this bit to do. And then I think, folks, um, I'm just wondering if that needs to be... It looks like part of her apron, doesn't it? If it is there, then it, surely it should be there. I think it is. So, yeah, so I think um, we'll do this bit together. And then I'll call it a day for today, if you don't mind, um, because of sitting still too long. We need to go and I have to just take the pressure off by laying down and that's just checking you can see. That's all I can do with it really. And then we'll finish it off tomorrow. I'm back in with the dark. Oh, I might have a rest. See how I feel. Well, you'll find out, won't you? If you get part one, then you know that I couldn't do any more, and I've. You'll get the the other part tomorrow. So 
let's see. Just blend it all in with that pale blue. And there we are. Okay, let's have a look. See if she's beginning to really come together. Look at that. Now, if I go off and do, um, if I go off now, yeah, I think I'm going to call it um, for tonight, guys. I really hope you don't mind. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just getting a little saucy in here. Hang on. Yeah. Um, I'll go off for tonight and um, we will come off and do, we'll come together, come back together and do part two. We might even need to do three parts because there's quite a lot of, mind you, once I've shown you one leaf, her dress is quite straightforward once you've got the colours. Um, yeah, it's actually, it looks a lot, but it probably isn't. So we can focus on her hair and her dress maybe tomorrow. All right, guys, I, yeah, I'm going to say good night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm decipher if I do apologise. All right, my lovely people, I'll say good night. So until we meet again tomorrow, take really good care of yourselves, and I'll see you then. Bye bye.